Hey, welcome back. It's Rick with Life in the North 40. Thanks for joining us in part two of our off-grid bathroom build that's going to accompany our amazing off-grid cabin we built last year. In part one, we did the groundwork, drainage system, foundation, and retaining wall. So now join us in part two of our off-grid bathroom build to see our new progress. Well, back down here at the bathroom build, I have let the spring rains come and go and it has really settled my trenching and it has sunk down uh, quite a bit. And I need to do a little backfilling, which is what I hope for. I'll show you that. You can see all the settling here where I dug in for this pipe. And I stubbed this in initially. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this pipe down here, turn that inside the cabin this will be the outside edge of the cabin. I'm gonna turn that pipe inside this four x four, come up, and then I'll turn it inside once I get it through the floor back into the wall, which will be in this area here. I checked level, everything's looking good and still level and plumb. This footer, because of the settling, is a little low. So after I fill all this in, I'm gonna lift this up and put a little dirt under here to get this to rise up a little bit, probably a quarter inch. This is the only one that is no longer level. So settling here, and then you see I've got settling here by that footer where I ran my pecs for my IBC tote. So I got to get that back filled a little bit as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and complete this retaining wall here, cut into this hillside a little bit more, cut these roots out with the with my reciprocal saw, just kinda get that dirt graded down to the lower area there. Just to get this in, I'll get some rebar in here, backfill it for our path coming to our door. And this guy here sure is content after eating uh, a couple turkey wings. So he uh, 
he's taking a nap now in this nice cool dirt right here. It probably feels good on his belly. So Murph, you know, every time I come down here to work, he finds some type of a deer leg, elk bone. Today it's a turkey. How you doing Murph? Hey Murph, Murph. He's just, he's, he's too pre-occupied uh, with his turkey. And then old Sarge, he's eating grass. So now that I've got the floor uh, frame on, I put the floor frame and kind of checked my positioning and everything. Everything's looking good. One of the things I'm doing here is I re-dug up the sink drain pipe. I had it running to the outside of the cabin over here, but I don't want it outside the cabin coming in the outside wall. So I turned it in to come right in alongside this four by four. Then once I get the floor on, this is the one of the wall plates. This is the width, it's a two by three. So once I get the floor on, the runners and the frame and then the plywood, I will cut a hole in the floor for this and I'm gonna turn it back in towards the wall here if I have room. If not, it's pretty darn close sitting on against that four by four without compromising the structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and rebury that and then we're gonna adjust the drain pipe and I'll talk about that when we get over there. All right, so we got that sink pipe, drain pipe inside the four by four now. And it's almost two feet deep to where we made the adjustment and put an elbow in. So it's, it's buried and we got it packed down again. Also now that's inside the cabin versus outside. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this handled. With the floor frame on, I've removed it. I measured that spot where that blade is, is where the pipe needs to be coming up to. Because with the floor frame on and the wall plate width, you have to measure nine inches this way and nine inches this way. And that's exactly where that blade is, inside the walls. So that is where the drain location is in the corner shower floor pan. So this is, as you can see, about four inches off. So what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and cut this and we'll connect an elbow, angle it that way. And then we'll run a pipe straight up dead center where that location is. So this pipe is now 11 and a half and 11 and a half, it's dead center. I have this top riser pipe just in here. It's not glued in yet. Just to make it easy to make my, uh, lay this in and the flooring and then make my cut in the floor and just glue this in place. So this is gonna be for the shower drain. Now we're ready to do our floor frame uh, and get that thing screwed together uh, in place and um, then make our cuts in our floorboards for these two drain pipes. Let's get that handled.
I'm going to pull the floor panels. I got one sheet of plywood here, and I'm going to go ahead and get those painted with a textured high cover uh, floor paint that's going to seal that flooring. I'm going to do the bottom and edges. I'm going to do all sides now, let them dry. The reason I'm using this textured floor paint is I want a little, a little grip to the floor, but I'm going to seal this plywood flooring on all the edges and both sides just for water damage prevention and longevity of the floor. This is a bathroom. So, so I was considering doing linoleum on this, just gluing a cheap piece of linoleum to, onto this top of the flooring. Then I started to think, you know, if that gets moisture up underneath it, it's just gonna rot. And the water will run down that linoleum left, right, under the floor plates. Um, so I'm just coating the floor with this material, so no matter what, it's protected. So the hard part is done. I can just lay the other two floorboards in here, get everything tight and screw them in. Another thing that I did is on the front and back of this shed cabin kit, uh, I had a pretty good gap under here and those blocks stick out on these front and back sides. But the front and back, because the blocks stick out, I can't put a metal skirt on. So I've backfilled the dirt up against that pressure treated four x four to keep the critters out, right? Anything that uh, finds out that this is a nice enclosed, covered, uh, protected area is gonna use it as a den or burrow into it. So I just go in ahead and backfill this. We are gonna go ahead and do a build up here uh, with some paver stones or, or brick or landscaping brick, whatever. But we're gonna have to build up because this is gonna be the floor height so you see we've got a pretty decent step up. As you can see here on this end, the stones or blocks are inset. So because this is pretty high from the ground here, critters will get under on these sides. So I'll be able to screw right into you. I'll have to leave a gap. The siding overlaps this uh, floor frame a, a little bit and then there's some trim as well. But below here, this four by four area, I can get a piece of metal, maybe dig it in screw that metal on the sides, backfill it to keep any from anybody from getting underneath here, any critters. So I'll do a skirt on this side and the other side. So I'll show you the back, how I backfilled it. So here you can see the back edge. Got a little gap there, but you know, I'm gonna get that backfilled a little bit more. We got it backfilled pretty good and packed down just to keep stuff out. Uh, got my drain holes cut in those floorboards. I pulled those off because it's getting ready to rain. One of the things I wanted to do is I did not secure this floor frame down to these four by fours. So I'm gonna go ahead and run some screws down through this floor frame, uh, the floor frame runners, using uh, three inch coated screws so they won't get broken down or corroded from the pressure treated lumber. These are good for pressure treated. Well, that isn't going anywhere now. So we've got that lagged into our four by fours. See here, I've already discussed with you here, this huge gap I have on this side and that end over there. So I've got six pieces of my metal roofing. This is about 23 inches tall here uh, and 38 inches wide. 
I have enough pieces to uh, dig a trench. Once I see where my trim piece falls down here, I will go ahead and bury this subsurface. I'll use my hoe or whatever, just dig a trench. Drop that sheet metal right below that trim piece and screw it right into whatever wood's remaining. Maybe it's just gonna be the ends, the butt ends of these four by fours. So I wanted to show you that because what I've decided is I have quite a bit of extra insulation from the cabin build and it's for 24 wide stud spread. This is about 18 inch gaps here, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut those and lay this insulation in this flooring. One of the things I didn't do is put an underbelly under here like pressure treated plywood that I did on the cabin. So I don't want this insulation being torn out by critters and I need it suspended and, and maintained in here. So an easy way to do this, because I've already screwed the frame down to the four x four foundation, and this is a bathroom, it does need to be insulated because there's gonna be water and a shower in here. But I thought before I lay the floor on and it's raining, so I can't lay the floor on, what I was going to do is they make this in, in galvanized metal too, which I use for my chimney to secure my chimney, a cheap and inexpensive way to do that, is I'm going to use this heavy duty plastic pipe uh, hanger strap, plastic hanger strap, and I'm going to put runs through here to retain my insulation. Um, I am not going to have an underbelly on this, um, but I am going to lay contractor plastic on the ground like you see typically uh, in crawl spaces under homes. I've got some heavy thickness mill. Um, I want to do all this in one day. Lay the, the plastic in here this way and then this way around the cement pillars just to kind of give me a vapor barrier at ground level underneath the cabin before I seal this off by putting my insulation and flooring on top and then putting my metal along the edges to seal this entire area off from critters. So I think because I had that insulation, I might as well insulate this floor. It'll make a difference in the winter time. And then my pecs coming into the cabin, I'll get some of that foam pipe insulation and just wrap that pecs from ground level up to where it's gonna meet my pump and convert down into my uh, on-demand 12 volt C-flow pump and then uh, insulate where it's gonna go into my instant hot water tankless water heater as well. All right, so you can see, I just split the distance between this gap here, this gap here, and ran those down that line basically. Over here you see it's fairly close to that edge because there's no two by four lip for that very edge to sit on. I thought I'd just put that piece there. Got this two by four, these are at the same height as these other underbelly cross members. So that insulation will just lay right across here. And you know, then it's there's that lip of that two by four on the edge of the frame. So same thing here with that piece that's close to the edge. There is new two by four lip. So we've got the four by fours here too as well. But you know, we've got the two by fours underneath. So right now that's gonna be, I, I think good enough boxing to retain that insulation and just have it sit in there nice once I cut it to size and pack it in there uh, before we lay on the floorboards. If you are watching my channel and you're a professional, you're a contractor, a builder, uh, don't have your feelings hurt when you see things I'm doing that aren't to code or to the building standard where you live. Hey, listen, this is an off-grid cabin in the middle of the woods on my property. So I'm doing it the way I want to do it. And you know, this plastic may not be to standard uh, as far as under an actual home build in the crawl space, etc. I just had the plastic. So I wanted to put a vapor barrier underneath. This is just going to mitigate moisture. Is it completely sealed and tight? No. You see, I got the crisscross pattern to avoid the uh, cement abutments. I have a little overlap. This will go ahead and settle and sink down further. I cut around for my drain pipe, but you know what? This is gonna mitigate weeds or moisture up under the underbelly because I am gonna have insulation laid in here, here shortly. And uh, I don't, I'm not gonna put a plywood underbelly under this um, like I did my cabin. Uh, this is not that kind of an expense. I've already spent a good chunk on the all-seater planting shed 
uh, because it's a really cool setup and I think it's gonna work great for this bathroom. So I just skip the underbelly, uh, hence the reason for the strapping to hold the insulation in place. But why not use this? I had the contractor plastic and this is a pretty good fit. Uh, fit them it, avoiding the blocks. If I'd have thought about it, maybe I'd have laid plastic down on my pad before I put the blocks in place. But that would have been too difficult to maneuver everything for level and plumb as I adjusted it. But I'm happy with this. I think it's going to work great. And then I'm ready to drop my floorboards in. I've already had the floorboards on and checked fit them it. They were perfect. I pre-painted them, as you saw, and I've cut my drains. So all I need to do is lay it in get everything tight and square. Uh, I am gonna snap some chalk lines, so that'll make the screwing of the floorboards quick and easy. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and cock all my seams and edges and touch up paint as needed. I still have three quarters of a gallon of that textured heavy duty floor paint. And I'll just get that done, and then we're ready to start staining the components up by our shop, our body and trim color and then start building this baby.